Hey guys, this is Max and today I will review the Yashica Mat 124G. The Yashica Mat 124G is a medium format twin lens reflex camera. What does it stand for, twin lens reflex? It basically means uh, that you have two lenses. One is called the viewing lens, the upper one, and the lower one is the taking lens. So the viewing lens would be the one that the photographer is actually looking through at the subject and the other one would be as the name says, for actually taking the picture. Um, the focal length of these two lenses is 80 millimeters, which is the typical focal length for medium format cameras and is the equivalent for the 50 millimeter focal lengths for 35 millimeter film cameras or typical full frame digital cameras. In addition to these lenses, you have a set of close up lenses for the Yashica. Uh, which is really great if you're into close-up photography and want to take pictures of flowers or raindrops or something like that. The camera features a waist-level viewfinder. Um, so you basically open it up like that and uh, hold it down to your waist and can look through it, um, adjusting the focus here on the, on the side. And the camera has a built-in light meter that only starts once the viewfinder is open. And in addition to that, you have a little wheel here on the side that helps you set the ISO. Um, unfortunately, the ISO can only be set until or up to 400. Um, so if you're shooting um, higher ISO film or you want to show shoot an HP5 film at uh, push to 800 or 1600 or something, you can't do that using that built-in light meter. So you would always have an additional light meter with you to, to make sure your exposure is right. Um, in addition to that, uh, which is uh, quite typical for such cameras, is that you have a manual film advance uh, lever here on the side. Sounds great. So after each shot you would have to advance manually. Um, no automatic for that. And in addition to that, what's also kind of helpful is that you do have a shutter lock um, that you can activate like that and once it's activated it's not possible to use uh, the shutter anymore so if you put it in the back it's a useful function and if you put it, put it back here um, the shutter works again. Um, what's so great about this camera is that it's rather inexpensive so you can get a copy in a decent to good condition for about 140 to 180 euros and given that it has an aperture of 3.5 and really great Yashica lenses, um, this is a pretty good deal and I can highly recommend uh, taking a look at this camera. Um, so let's take a look at some of the pictures I took with the camera and um, what I learned using it. I want to start with two shots uh, that I shot outside uh, using color film during a vacation at my parents place up north in northern Germany and here you can see uh, kind of a bird <laughs> looking proud towards the sea it was around sundown or sunset uh, the beautiful colors that Portra 160 uh, gives you the only things that I don't like about the images is uh, the red on the left that kind of distracts and the trash in the foreground um, there was not much that I could do about that but besides that I really like how it turned out in the sharpness of the image um, here's another example taken with Portra 160 uh, at the same location and uh, you get beautiful colors you get really sharp images this was shot wide open at f3.5 with the Yashica and I really like the kind of details that you can see here in um, for example, the lock here down there, um, uh, the wood and the texture of the wood, that's uh, really nice in my opinion. But as you know, I'm kind of focusing on um, uh, portraits, so I want to show you some of my favorite portraits that I took with this camera. Um, this here was one of the first portrait shoots that I did with the Ashika, so I was really trying uh, back then. And this is a shot of Julia sitting in the grass and I kind of like how the trees frame the image and frame her and she's this spot of attention sitting there um, illuminated by the early morning sun 
I really also like the composition of this image and how it turned out. Uh, um, I was kind of lucky in terms of how the sharpness and everything uh, and the overall feeling. I really like this image. Uh, here's another one from the same morning. Um, she kind of reaches out or grips uh, some of the grass and then looking towards the sun in her white dress. Really nice. And having some of the shadows from the trees in her face, which was intentional, so in case you're wondering. And the background completely black, so we have a really nice contrast between her here in the foreground and a shadows behind her that are not even illuminated by the sun at that time of day. Um, this one was taken last weekend and it gives you a good idea of how close you can get with the 80mm focal lens. Um, and as you can see, something I should have mentioned earlier, uh, the, this is a 6x6 medium format camera, so what you get is always square images. So you have different options or ways of composition than you would have with a typical um, 645 medium format or 6x7. So I, I really like using 6x6 for portraits, it's kind of interesting, uh, at least to me. And here you get beautiful bokeh, you kind of see what this lens can do uh, and how beautiful it can be. Uh, here's another example, again shot wide open at 3.5, uh, of her <laughs> leaning forwards and me kind of <laughs> at the same time tilting to the side. I can't really remember whether that was intentional because as you can see the horizon is <laughs> kind of um, off. Um, but for some reason I like this image. Uh, Okay, that we're both tilting towards that side uh, and, and her smile is just a beautiful at that particular moment, it's really nice. I really enjoyed that image, I really enjoy that image. Uh, this is my girlfriend, Katerina, and uh, this one was taken with a close-up lens at my parents' place up north. We just went outside and went to a field to take some pictures, some images, both color and black and white, and I will show you some of the color images in a second. And this one gives you an idea of what the um, close-up lens can do, but it also hints already at uh, the difficulties you might encounter, so the kinds of distortion that you might get potentially. Here you can't really see it and it's not, not an issue for the image, but I will show you two images later, or one image at least, where you can see there is a problem with distortion if you get too close. Yeah, this one I just like because of the light in her one eye and the sharpness on that particular eye and everything else kind of seems in motion and um, kind of blown in the wind. It's just really some, some dynamic in there. Uh, this one is another example of the close-up lens use. Uh, an image that we took during one of our blogger fashion shoots. So my girlfriend is a fashion blogger. And of course, I occasionally have to take a picture here um, for this one. And I increasingly use black and white cameras, uh, black and white film cameras, in addition to our digital camera, to our Leica T, to take these kind of images uh, that, I, that just have a completely different atmosphere, in my opinion. And I really like this one here. Mm. Another one from the same shoot. Just to give you an idea again of the depth of field, the kind of sharpness uh, that you can achieve when shot wide open. And here again we're back up north at my parents' place during our vacation and we were kind of lucky because the sun came out and uh, my girlfriend immediately turned towards the sun and we have this beautiful light coming in, we have those beautiful colors that Portra 160 gives you. Uh, and just really like how uh, the flowers are kind of moving towards her, looking at her, and she turned towards the sun, uh, and the blue of the dress, the blue of the sky, and her dark hair, it's just, I uh, just, I'm kind of messy and wild, and at the same time, it radiates a sense of calm, uh, and that I really like, I just really like how this image turned out. Here's another one from the same um, scene and moment. Again, you can see it was kind of windy up, up north, and she's really good at posing <laughs> for the camera. I also like how this one turned out, and another one, which is a little bit more difficult because as you can see, I probably failed to 
um, expose for the shadows here enough. Uh, so it's it already the, the background, especially the sky, is already kind of blown out, but still you don't get enough, at least in my taste. Her, her face is just a little bit too dark. And it would have been nicer to have her face a little bit lighter. Um, and what's also difficult about this image, at least for me, is uh, the messy foreground that you have, at least in the lower left corner, you have some stuff that you that it should be much more out of focus for my taste and that didn't work out so well in this case. And this image I really like, this one was taken last weekend, uh, two friends basically asked me to take the picture and I brought uh, the film camera as well. Um, this one was shot on Rolei RPX 100 and I really like how it turned out because of the strong contrast and the skin tones and the details, the texture of their their skirts and their shirts and everything. Uh, I really like it and uh, the little, uh, I don't know, the lights in the background. We had early morning sun in this case uh, and it's uh, really beautiful how it turned out. The only thing that you can see here is that uh, sometimes, occasionally, um, in situations like that, the bouquet can be a little bit messy, but only to some extent, so you get those little swirls in there and distortions. Um, but as you could see with the image, of Lisa that I showed earlier, it's not always the case, or not always so bad, it really depends on the image. And then two more images that I want to show you um, that were taken inside during a rainy day. I used an Ilford HP5 film, pushed to 1600, to uh, because it was really a low light situation, and here I just wanted to capture the raindrops collecting on my window and the flower in the foreground. The only thing that I don't like about the image is how the flower meets the frame of my window. Um, but besides that, I think it really turned out nice. And here one last example, and as promised, um, this gives you an idea of how the close-up lens can potentially distort your subject. Uh, this one here, as you can see, the, the iPad mini and the glasses are slightly distorted. Um, but at the same time, you get beautiful bokeh um, you get wonderful sharpness, again, shot wide open at f3.5. Uh, another image I still really like, despite the distortion. Um, yeah. And I can highly recommend, by the way, pushing HP5 to 1600, it really turns out fine. So that's it. Um, thank you for watching, I hope this video was helpful to you. Please remember to like it and subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much.